Hello everyone and welcome to yet another gold making video and this time I'm going to talk about trade skill masters or rather trade skill master and how I go about setting up the pricing groups as asked on YouTube by the GL330 so if you have any anything you want talked about or if you have any particular suggestions for videos whether it's playthroughs or gold guides or raid guides or whatever let me know anyway moving on with the actual video Today I'm just going to be going through how I go about setting up the price ranges. Now, I know you could go into a lot more depth and you could have the price ranges set up expertly and just perfectly and beautiful and you could make more gold like that. Or if you're like me, you just want to, if you can get away, if you feel like you can get away with it, you'll be making some gold and you can just sort of get away with it more lazily. That is more my approach because I just don't want to spend all day trying to configure these things. So. What I'll do is, for example, if we have a look at, I've got old uncut gems because I feel like they're in a different price range and I'll be selling them differently than the uh, new cut gems. And the same thing for all the raw gems, you've got the uncommon gems that are cut and not cut. You know, so if it's a different price range completely, then I cannot get away with it. And if it's a different way of listing, you know, for example, if there's something you list in stacks of 20, do not put it in the group with things that are supposed to be listed in stacks of 1 because that's not a good idea. So we're going to go over to the cut gems, and as you can see, I've got just like pretty much every cut gem I can get my hands on. And then if we go into the operation options, we can view operation options. Make sure you've got match stack size in there. And I've got a post cap of 10 and a stack size of 1. So anything that is 10, 1, 24 hours, and has these minimum, maximum, and normal price, which is pretty much just the cut gems, then I will slap them in here. Now, how I go about doing this is the minimum price is set so low because I find River's Heart, the price of that will sometimes plummet, and you know what? I have got so much River's Heart that I, I would sell it at a loss. I don't care, I just want to get rid of it. Just go away River's Heart. So I don't want it not posting or not selling because of the minimum price being set too high. So the minimum price is set so low because River's Heart is a pain to get rid of. And then the normal and maximum price are there for like the rest of the gems that actually make me some money. And I wouldn't worry too much about the minimum price. I mean, mine's a pretty dead server, really, with the economy. And even with mine, there's enough competition and the prices are still high enough for me to be able to undercut somebody and still be way above the minimum price, with the exception of River's Heart, which just sucks. So I have got the normal price set to 150, which I feel is about fair. And 250, anything higher than that, I just feel like that is just ridiculous, and I want to just sell for lower than that. So, 150 gold. If I can get 150 gold for a gem, I'm happy. If I'm selling it for less than 15 gold, even if it's River's Heart, I don't want to sell because that's just stupidly low. And I find that that price is constantly getting lower and lower and lower because River's Heart is getting harder and harder and harder to get rid of. So, I've got all of the cut gems in this sort of price range and I find that 150 gold is just sort of the normal price of one of the highest um, uh, selling gems, you know, one of the gems that just sells for the most and 150 gold is about right for that and then everything else just ends up undercutting other people and finds its own price range within that. So I've got 150 and 15 sort of around there for the gems. I, I can't be bothered to set up a whole bunch of different groups for all of the different gems. You can if you want to. It just, it feels unnecessary for me. I mean, I can still make quite a lot of gold with this, and I don't usually get caught um, with my pants down with this particular setup with the gems, because gems, as I've said, you know, there's people there, if you don't undercut, the prices don't tend to get pushed too low, so it's not really a problem. You can have it set like this. You could even have your minimum price set to five gold, and the only thing that would probably sell for that would be the River's Heart, because they suck. I hate you, River's Heart. You could just go away. I'm getting this close to deleting you. Anyway, moving on. Then if you look at Living Steel, I should actually have that enabled. Now, I've got a post cap of 10 and a stack size of 1. Again, with a lot of gems or, or steel or things that aren't going to sell for just insane, insanely quickly, rather not insane amounts, but insanely quickly. You know, you don't want to just flood the market because you know what happens when you flood the market? The price goes down and you sell it for less. So just don't flood the market. You want to release it a little bit at a time to sort of dribble it on and that way you'll make more gold. So I have the post cap set at what I think would be high enough for me to make quite a bit of gold and sell quite a few of them, 
but not so high as to just overwhelm the auction house that it can't take it and the price plummets and then I can't sell anything for a decent price. So now let's have a look at the living steel. I bought the living steel for 350 gold. Therefore, minimum price is 350 gold. Anything less than that and I am making a loss. Technically speaking, a little bit higher than that and because of the auction house cuts and I'll probably still be losing a little bit of gold but for the most part I'll be kind of getting my money back so I'm, I'm okay with that. Minimum price, I bought it for that, don't want to sell it for less than that. Normal price is twice the minimum price because I figure I can get away with that and I can make twice as much. I can get my money back um, two times over which would be pretty fantastic and that's why the normal price is seven, at 700 gold. And if it's a bit less than that, you know what, no worries, as long as it's above 350, all good. Maximum price, if it's above that, I don't think anyone is ever going to buy it. Or if they do, they won't buy very many, and I'd rather, I've got quite a few living steel bars, so I'd wa rather sell like three than sell one, you know. So I'd rather sell, and then that ends up giving me 2,100 gold instead of 1,250 or, or whatever. Maximum price, I just set it so that if it's po posted at that kind of price, it's not going to sell because it is too high. That is what my maximum price is there for. So if it's above max, it just posts at normal. If it's below min, it posts at normal anyway for this particular group. Um, there are ones where I don't post at all, and I'm going to talk about that next. We're going to talk about fell iron ore. Now let's go and have a look at this. All right, we've got fell iron ore. Now in fell iron ore, I actually have fell iron bar because it, I feel like it's exactly the same price range is about the same, the amount I want to post, the way I want to post it, all exactly matching, therefore they're in the same group. Now the reason why fell iron ore is different is because the minimum price is actually around about the normal auction house price. But I am buying it for that, again much like the living steel, I'm buying it for that and I'm pushing the price up, okay? And this is why I won't be posting it normal. And that's because I, when it's below minimum, in other words, when it's you know below what I'm trying to keep the market above, then I don't want it to post because when I'm doing the posting thing, it'll say not posting below minimum, and then I know okay, I need to go into the fell iron market. I need to buy some fell iron, and I just need to completely mess up that market again and push the prices way up. And then you know what? I'll have more fell iron and I can relist. And that's what that's there for. It's so that it's the I don't post it because. I want to be ready to push the market up and I want to be notified and when it's in giant red letters it's much easier for me to see and that's the main reason I do it. And I've got the maximum and normal price set at way way higher, kind of like the level where I'm pushing it up to. That's kind of where the maximum and normal prices are where I'm pushing the fell iron or market up to. And that's what I will do if, I'm, if it's a market that I mess around with. You'll find that infinite dust, pretty much the same thing the minimum price is actually generally like the, the normal price on the auction house and I will never sell it for less than that or even at that. Um, if you're gathering the fell iron ore it's completely different of course but because of the way I'm messing around with it, it the price range changes for me. I could have I could just go into it and edit it later of course you know you can just go in here and say fell iron ore okay I'm no longer messing around with it I'm now gathering it and you can change the price ranges if you want to I never gather, gather fell iron ore whenever I'm selling fell iron ore it's because I'm screwing with the market so yeah that's why I've got these set up that way and when it's above maximum same reason posting it at normal because I don't think it's going to be selling for that much and believe it or not sometimes I'll mess around with the auction house and people will post it like twice what I'm posting it for which is just absurd because people probably battle to buy what I'm posting it for and yet they're posting it for like twice as much so just silliness don't set the maximum price too high if you get too greedy you just aren't gonna sell anything and you'll make no money so don't get too greedy rather sell a whole bunch of things at a lower price than one thing very very occasionally for a stupidly high price because somebody misclicked um, you don't want to do that and um, I think that's pretty much it. If I look at the uncommon gems, I've got them posting um, 20 stacks of one. So I've got the kind of uncommon gems all grouped together because, you know, they're in sort of the same price range. Some of them are a lot higher, but some of them have a minimum price that is super, super low. But I still want to be posting them. And again, I am lazy. Technically, I should create a new group for the ones that have a much, much smaller and lower price range, usually the blue ones. Um, but I just have them all in a single group and then I just have the normal price being what I will normally sell the highest price gem for and then the minimum price what I feel I can get away with on the lowest price gem before it just gets ridiculous. 
So that's kind of how I gem, do the gem ones um, for the most part. Char crystals, they're in their own group because I do, can't really think of anything that I want to post in that kind of group. Glyphs, much like gems, they've got their group all just for glyphs all slapped together. Cloth, um, cloth kind of depends. There are some cloth that are in the same price range and I pretty much post cloth in the same way all the time. So if it's in the same price range as the cloth that I've already got in this list cloth group, then I slap them in there. Otherwise, I'll just create a second one if they're in strange price ranges. But I've only got one list cloth because at the moment I'm only selling, I think it's frost weave, ember silk, and the panda cloth. And they're all pretty much in the same price range, so I just have them all in the same group. And I've got primal diamonds in a separate group to my cut gems because they're at a completely different price range. I don't want to post nearly as many. I mean, if you look at the the post settings. I've got a post cap of two, which is higher than that, and I feel like I'll be flooding the market a bit. And I've got the prices, they're just absurdly higher. You know, just way, way higher. I mean, if I tried to sell, you know, a um, Sovereign Imperial Amethyst because there were none on the auction house for 600 gold, oh, I doubt it would even sell, honestly. And I, I'd feel bad selling it for that price because it's insane. But for Primal Diamond, I'm buying it at 350, minimum price 350. And then if I can get higher than that, I'm happy too high it won't sell that's just the way I've got it set up and I look at the way that it is things are priced and generally my minimum price will be what I will get away with selling the lowest priced item for before it starts making a loss kind of thing and I'll just have the minimum price low enough so that it will still post under normal circumstances but not too low uh, so that I'm getting cheated out of the deal because and then that's the way I'm slacking a little bit. I could have these things in all different groups, but that just feels like it would take way too long. And that is that's pretty much it. I mean, all I really do is look at it on the auction house. I search for the item, and I'll look at the prices there, or I will hover over it and have a look at it on my auctioneer data and what it reckons. I'll put the minimum price lower than it reckons the bid would be, generally, sort of like the lowest price it reckons this could sell for. And then I will have the normal price a bit higher than the highest it reckons it might sell for. Or I'll just override that. Just use your brain. Don't just let the machines do all of the work. The machines can make mistakes. The machines are just data for you. You have got to process the data and decide to use that data or just say, no, this is wrong and get rid of it. And just ignore it and do your own price range. Up to you how you want to do these things. I hope this video has helped. And if it has please let me know. And if you have any more questions, suggestions, or anything for future videos, let me know in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter or Google+. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and cheerio.